Hello everyone, welcome to the last match day of the first half of the season. Once we complete this match day, we'll, all the matches we'll see this league we've or this season we've you have already seen. So it won't be anything new to us, then we'll be just going doing the same matches that we did. But these this is the last matchup of teams that have yet to face each other. And we're gonna start with Leyenda hosting Dragoish. Dragoish, of course, we know now, have stolen the momentary first spot from the Griffins. Leyenda with a win against the Griffins, which hand the Griffins their first defeat in a long, long time. Can Leyenda maybe do it again today against Dragoish? We're about to find out. Hold on. Yeah, that works. Head on over to the VPSA Arena. We're good to go. Rainy, it's been getting colder and colder here. I have my heater on now. So yeah, I'm really curious about this one. I will say I don't think Leenda will be <coughs> I don't think Leenda will be able to spring any surprises today, maybe really. Um I think I think Drago should have this one in the bag really. But we'll see. We'll see if Leenda can maybe bring back some of the magic that they had for the Griffins match. Also, I'm I've been at this weird place for the past two or three weeks where I've just kind of been at a solid 50% with my health. There are some days where I just feel really, really sick. Some days I feel better. I'm at one of those times where I don't feel so good. My my head and my, my nose is all congested. So, we'll see. I'll get through it. And Lawton is already through. Oh my goodness. No mercy, no time wasted whatsoever. Dragosh immediately with the with the goal. It was a good save originally from Haranush. But Dragosh already picked one out. That is Ferdinand's first goal of the season. He hasn't scored yet this season until today. So yeah, excellent stuff from them. And I thought Haranush might have got a hand to it, but... Ferdinand with the excellent timing there. Does what he does best. Ferdinand moving the ball nicely here. Foul on Moretti. There's Ramiro. This could be a good chance for Leenda. Right into Truchin's hands. But that's what Leyenda need. They need opportunities. And as long as they're taking them and making them count, then that's what matters. Here comes Lotsam once again. It's going to be out for a corner. 
goes through everyone. And there's a foul on the end up there. Free kick. Bit of frantic play there from Leyenda. The ball's at Delfini's feet. And it finds Sovoslai. I will remind you, is one goal away from the current top scorer leader, Fred. So a goal from Sovoslai tonight will have him on the same amount of goals as Fred. Good stuff from Leao to win it back. But Van Beckenbauer takes it right back. Find Soboslai. That was good there. A filter past the Soboslai. Be uh, I almost call him Behrens. It's Harnosh. With the instinct to just push it away as far as he could. And they've already lost it. It could be two. They should have really taken that one. That was theirs for the taking. Someone's on the ground, it's, can't tell who it is, Jafari Blackwood. Well, he should be fine. As the ball's with Lawton and Sobosly again. Ah, uh, Hanash collects it, and yep, Blackwood is good to go. Come Sam, Leao, Utramiro, who's excellently brought, uh, taken out by, I think that was Frank Castle. It's going to take more than that to beat this Dragoish defense. As Ferdinand is making his way forward, it's still Ferdinand. The ball pops loose, it's cleared away. loud. I don't know if you guys heard that, but that was the wire popping again. It's a foul on Jesus. It's going to be a warning for Anderson. And a free kick for Leyenda. Jesus. He's dispossessed there. He tried to kind of take the trying to juke the ball away from Anderson, but at the end he fell apart there. And here's Sobosly. The ball to Delfini. And the save! 
And once again, another rebound. This time it's Soboslai. And as I mentioned before, he has taken his chance, which makes him have six goals this season. Currently having him tied for top scorer this season. Soboslai has just been phenomenal in front. He's been super reliable, so, so, so reliable up front. Granted that these two goals have been sort of off rebounds like that, but you have to be at the right place at the right time. You have to have good positioning in order to even have those chances in the first place. And it's 2-0. Early sub. We all know why those happen. It's when the team's down 2 0 way early into the match. And Jesus is going to come off for Majic, who's making his debut. So I'm interested to see how he does today. He's a rookie. He was signed just not not even that long ago. I think he was signed yesterday. So we'll see how he does, how he holds up. Here comes Dragaj once again, Soboslai up the wing. Comes off of Behrens. Soboslai with the free kick. Let's head it away. Leyenda have not really done well to consolidate some possession. It's been they've kind of lost it a few times. They have tried to have a few chances themselves, but it really has been pretty one-sided. The defense has been doing all right, and Sobosai picks it away. Another save. This time, the Dragoic player was not there for the rebound. As it sailed in there, and Harnash plucks it away. It's whipped in for Leyenda, and it's a header from Gabi Cantalupi. And that was very interesting. It seemed that it was dipping under the bar, and Tujin, for some reason, didn't want to collect it. So instead, he just holds, he just punches it away for some reason. But yep, we're already at the end of the first half, and it's been pretty, pretty certain who's been the better team today so far. Though I, my predictions will probably hold. stats In the 33rd minute 
Someone says looking to inch on that on that top goal scorer position. It's been pretty pretty dominant, unfortunate for Leenda. Well, let's see if they can rescue anything from the second half. there with a great opportunity is cleared away when it becomes off for max it's a free kick for Dragos another header from Sobo slide but that one's well wide Majic, it's going to be a free kick. There's Delfini. He has a pop from distance, but unfortunately couldn't keep it down. That was sales wide. There's Majic. They've lost it, so it's a throw for Dragoish. Arichetta looks to win that one. Oh, Gojibin from Majic. Back to Cheta. Finds Gabi, but he collides with a few Dragoish players. They have possession. And he runs straight into Ramirez as Dragoish win back the ball. Once again, they're looking to attack a bit more. to Fernandez who's on the wing oh, heavy touch from Ramiro it's still with Leyenda with Chera. he finds Fernandez who has, has the ball intercepted but it's out for a throw rough play there it's a free kick for Leyenda it's sent in 
is going, doesn't enable anybody to find it. And now it's with Ferdinand. And Ferdinand is blitzing his way into the box. He finds Delphini. Brilliant save. Oh, and the execution once again on another rebound. But Ferdinand blasted it sky high that time. Chereda Fernandez who sends it in. Cut it away. Good from Majic. He's been pretty good today on his debut. Majic sends it in. Oh my goodness, it crawled through everyone. And Majic still has the ball. That was that was interesting from Leyenda. Majic there with a bit of magic. To spur a potential Leyenda attack. Gabi, Tremiro, Majic, to Max. It looks like there's going to be a free kick there for Dragos. Sam's looking to fight to win that one. He's brought to the ground to so another free kick for Leyenda. I think if Leyenda snag a goal here. As Sam with the strike. Granted to Truchin's hands. A very good effort. Here's Ramiro. Stretches to Cheda. The strike goes wide, but it looks like they are starting to press a bit more. I think a goal here would do them favors a bit, just to make the scoreline a bit more respectable. That Gorsh have sort of resorted to sit back, maybe hit them on the counter attack, which is fair. Ooh, and Ramiro pokes it through, and Van Beckenbauer tackles Ramiro in the box, and it's going to be a penalty kick. Now let's see if Leyenda can capitalize on this error. Sam Dimitra to take it. And it's in. Right down the middle. Leyenda have clawed one back. A bit of a scrappy, scrappy piece of play there. But they've won one back. Excellently struck down the middle from Sam Dimitra. That's his first goal of the season. Unfortunately, he doesn't have the help from Chess that he usually links up with to play with, so he hasn't had much assistance. And Ferdinand whips it in. That header was very poor. It looks like Leander are going to go all out attack for this last last few minutes of the match. Blackwood Ramirez. Dragos may be to seal it with a goal here. It's a foul. Free kick for Leander. Dafini breaks loose. It's taken away from the defense. 
Majic. It's still Majic. What? Majic has been good today for a debut. And he's still going. He sends it in. That was a weak cross, unfortunately. Oh, and Floyd Lawton has broken through. It could be over here. And at the last minute, Aduya dead. Prevents Lawton from getting a strike. That was very impressive there. The Gorge have found to sit back more from to thwart any lay in the attacks. Here's Cheda. Finds Dimitra. Or no, that's Dimitra. Sorry. So we have throw in for Lien in a pretty good spot here. And Riley Max with some dribbling. Ah, it's dribbled out. Throw for Dragoish. Last few minutes of the match here. Two minutes of added time. Great slide tackle from Latin. It's a throw for Leyenda. This match will end very shortly. Time waste. Fuad sends it in. And that's it. This result I was expecting. But I was not expecting Leyen to sort of take it at the end there. But unfortunately it was not enough for them. And after a brilliant win against the Griffins. They fall into another defeat against Dragoish. Pretty good shot, uh, stop, uh, shot stopping from Hangnash. Of course, the two goals that came off of rebounds were unfortunate for him. But there it is, a plucky penalty of uh, just horrible challenge. Gave Leyen the way back into the match, but not enough. And that guy should come away with the victory. So I was given man of the match. I think that's fair. Adulia Dej was pretty good. Fernandez was pretty good. Majic had a really good start. Uh, a five. That's really rough. I'd give him like a six. He had a really decent debut for his first game ever. So definitely deserves a shout out. But yeah, I think I will give it to Sobosai. He was pretty good. And in the attack. So I'll go ahead and give it to him. Has he been given it before? He has, so he has two now. So look at that. All right. Oops, forgot to edit the score. There we go. All right. Let's move right along to the next match. After that, go ahead take their three points against Leyenda. With Griffins against Norfolk. Now, this one I'm pretty curious about. Because, of course, Griffins have faltered a bit. This is the first time they've faltered in a while. And now they find themselves in a position where 
they are no longer the league leaders. So now instead of having to play a race, they're playing a catch-up now. And it's a catch-up against the Dagoish. Now, of course, Norfolk are currently fourth on eight points. Of course, they're sharing those same points with Eshtahan and Rovers, all with eight points. They have varying goal differential between them. So a win for Norfolk here against the Griffins would be massive for them in that fight for the top three, which I must say, Norfolk have been doing pretty well to stay in that battle for the period that they've been in. So yeah, these two teams have not faced each other yet this season. So it's going to be an interesting look into how they stack up against each other. I would say that I go, uh, that I, go, uh, I would say that Griffins have um, are pretty uh, slightly the favorites. I wouldn't say they're absolute favorites, but they're slightly the favorites. Of course, how they do will depend on how they stack up against the Norfolk attack. Because remember. It's a stacked attack that they have now, as we see an early yellow card for Sanchez on a bending tackle on Hernandez. Bibit will take it. He has a strike from distance, and Schneider pops it to the ground safely in his hands. That's going to be interesting too. How will the Griffins attack look to play against Schneider, who's a solid goalkeeper? Another poor tackle. I think that's going to be yellow card. Nope. The ref is gracious on the captain. So White's at none this. And he finds Fred, but he's in an offside position. Good call from the Norfolk defenders. Oh, and that was interesting. A bit of a miscommunication there. The ball's with the Griffins. Excellent sliding tackle. It's with Oppenheim. And the defense pounces on it. It's with Béranger. The defense is on it, though. I do wonder, I did say it at the beginning, but I really do wonder how Norfolk attackers are going to play against the Griffins defenders. Griffins defenders are top notch, and Norfolk attackers at this point are not too shabby themselves either. And here's Hawkins. Nathan Hawkins is powering through. Oh, and a late challenge from Nathan Hawkins and Axel. It's going to be a free kick. Griffiths defenders are, are pressured there. That's what I'm saying. We have Tom Price, Ayodeli. Those are two top-notch attackers. Beranger, maybe less less so, since he hasn't been upgrading much. Baba Tunde whips it out to Santos on the wing. And Santos with the first time cross comes off the defender for a corner. Tom Price. Oh, excellent jury from Tom Price. And he dribbles it into space. Tom Price. Ooh, it was cutting in at a, at a steep angle for Lehman. But Lehman did manage to punch it out. The corner. And it's collected by Lehman. Papa Tunde now. Oh, Babatunde cuts in. He finds Oppenheim. 
And an excellent tackle at the last moment allows Schneider to collect it from the air. This match has been much more stop and go than the previous one. Here's Baba Tunde. Baba Tunde recovers it. And Fred tries to win the header, but he doesn't get a good angle on it. Oh, good stuff from Santos to win it back. Beranger for Norfolk. This could be good. He finds Hawkins. He finds Ayodele somehow with acres of space. And Lehman reaches hands to it. But it looked to be going off to that other Norfolk player. Luckily that Griffin's defense gets on it before it comes to any trouble for them. But yeah, see, I have been saying that, and it does look like Norfolk attackers are looking to put pressure. Good journey from Beranger. with Hernandez who I guess decides to just go for the go for glory but it's he timed it all wrong unfortunately Delhi to Tulio Ortiz to Santos oh this could be good Red passes it into space for Hernandez and looks like Norfolk are tight for tight for defenders here. Fred Shirley. It had to be Fred. And it looked like they were just building it up there. Fred does what Fred does best. Smacks it into the back of the net. And right when Norfolk were stretched out with men at the back, the Griffins pounce and take the lead. Oh, Fred wins it back. From Tulio Ortiz. Fred elects to play it a bit more conservatively. I wonder how Norfolk will respond. I think they've got an in them. But they need to organize their attacks. Finds Oppenheim. Ooh, he's tackled, but the ref says nothing. Oh, Baba Tunde's looking good here. He tries to find Fred, but the defender got to it first. Oh, Fred intercepts. Tries to find a chip past Hernandez, but it's not working. Bieber finds it to Hernandez. That was a brilliant piece of movement there from Bieber. I think Hernandez maybe maybe had a bit better options there than just to head it from there. Oh, here's Oppenheim. And Oppenheim makes it 2-0. Again, they've broken through the defense. Oh my goodness, Price is furious. They just break through the defense like that. We'll see it again here. There he is, Oppenheim, making the excellent run through the pocket of the defense. And all he has to do is hit it very nicely past Schneider. 
Hernandez with the excellent vision to pick up Oppenheim's run as well. And the Griffins make it 2 0. I imagine that we'll see a Norfolk substitution because this is the exact same thing that's always happened. Two goals down in the first half, early in the first half, there will be substitutions. Here's Fred. Here's Cabral. Somehow Fred wins it. He's being challenged by in four. Oh my goodness, Fred almost won it there, but the ref says it was a foul. Oppenheim. Babatunde. Oh, my computer had a huge fart there. It's plugged in though, so it shouldn't be a problem. Here's Oppenheim. And Oppenheim is going to burst through. Oh, brilliant stuff from the defense. Cuts him out right there. Need some water. I'm gonna lean back so you guys don't hear the sloshing. Baba Tunde cuts back, tries to find Fred, and another foul. Fred is very dangerous, as just plucking the ball away from the defense right there for, through pressure. And of course, since he's so deadly up front. Here's Fred again. He finds Babatunde. Babatunde is in acres of space. Ooh. I don't think Schneider got a touch to it. But the Griffins are venomous. They're out for venom today. Maybe that Leyenda defeat really whipped them into shape. Oh, it's going to be a free kick for Norfolk in a really good position. Tom Price. And that's over the bar, but not by that much. It's still a decent effort. Oh, you know, it almost hit the bar, too. It very, very much skimmed it. Here's Tom Price. He passes it into space for Beranger, but Axel is on it first. That's what you can expect from the Griffins defense. Sweeping up any trouble. Tom Price. Again, the defense acting well. This time with help from Bieber. I guess I think that was Bieber. Pablo Tunde. Couldn't get through. Santos finds Baba Tunde once again. Baba Tunde whips it in right into Schneider's hands. We're going to go to the break with a 2 0 Griffins victory. Of course, this result will still keep them in second place due to the goal differential. Sixth minute. Oh, look at that. Mateo Hernandez will get two assists. Interesting. Very well done. He's been the go to man today. There he is. Six minutes later, Mateo Hernandez with yet another assist. That's really wonderful from him. You'll love to see it. Baba Tunde almost had one himself, but it just dragged wide. I'm really curious to see how Norfolk will respond. Also, I don't think we saw any subs like I predicted, so that's interesting to know as well. Maybe the game knows the team has been playing well. 
it's halfway some decently, so maybe subs are in order. Alright. down the stats really quickly because I missed something again. Oh, here comes Hawkins. Ah, uh, cut out. Bit does well to retain possession, but he doesn't really calculate the pass that well. Tulio Ortiz. Oh, he loops it into Beranger. Ah, uh, but Anderson meets him. It's going to be a corner for Norfolk. Ortiz to take it. Oh, my goodness. They let one in. That was a bit of a. Uh, miscalculation from Lehman and Hawkins will claim it I, I'll, I'll, it probably will because it was headed towards the goal yep and look at that Norfolk have clawed one back and they've they've taken they've taken a goal from the impenetrable Griffin's defense in a moment of pure confusion now this will certainly make things interesting It's a poor pass. It was all the way back. The player had to backtrack and it went out. So, but somehow that's not Nathan Hawkins' first goal of the season, is it? Yep. He already has one, so he has two now. As a defensive midfielder, that's not too shabby. And there's still plenty of game to go, so maybe maybe the match isn't completely gone for Norfolk. touch from Larson but he does try and get a pass didn't find anyone unfortunately there's chaos there it finds McGee oh and what the heck happened there <laughs> Cabral with the diving, heading, sliding challenge. That's the greatest tackle I've ever seen in my life. Someone needs to frame that. If this results in a goal, what a chance. Oh my goodness, Babatunde with the diving header. If that would have resulted in a goal, that would have been the greatest technical assist from Joel Cabral. But it wasn't meant to be. But it will still live, in, live on in my heart. That was beautiful. Oh, Béranger. Lays it out to Ortiz. Tries to get it through to Price, but Axel is very intelligent on the ball. Off the ball, I should say. Nathan Hawkins does well and once again. Yep. Norfolk still have a foot in this. Oh, Tom Price hit it with the back of his head. If I've learned anything, it's that when you play football, you need to have the ball in front of you. It's just my expert opinion.
It's going to be a free kick for the Griffins in a good position. Be bet. Fancy's a shot, but that's well over. We still haven't technically seen like a struck shot. Because if I remember correctly, the Dragoj free kick, uh, it was Cassandro. He kind of chipped it in. It was like a chipped pass that kind of went through everyone. But we haven't seen someone like curl it in like an absolute banger of a free kick. Oh, great dribbling from Denny Pinto, but Griffins are on it. Hernandez finds Fred. Oh, he tries to, it's poked loose. Cabral, Bieber. He finds Hernandez. Oh, he's offsides. Man, Bieber the architect. Unfortunately, Hernandez was offsides. Ortiz wins it back, but a great tackle from Mark Markery dispossesses him. But Ortiz comes to fight it back. That's great stuff from Ortiz. Tom Price. Denny Pinto. Great tackle from Neil Cook. Tulio Ortiz is going to come off for Demarcus Jr. who's making his debut today. Delhi wins it back from Bedish, but Bedish is relentless when he has lost the ball. Oh, Tom Price. Ooh, Tom Price there almost had it back in a great opportunity. That was that's almost unheard of for the grip for the uh Griffin's defense to just kind of let it go. But they are in control once again. Oh, another poor pass. Fatigue is starting to set in, I'm sure. It already has set in for a while. Denny Pinto fighting for it. Oh, and Nanda does well to keep it in play. Here's the Rock Mockery. I don't know who hit that. It's going to be a corner. Oh my goodness. It almost fell to someone there. And Hernandez wins it back. To Rock Mockery. Oh. That was, uh, that was a bit of luck from Norfolk to prevent the ball from going anywhere. Because I think in that position, you're in no man's land. The ball could really go anywhere. It could come off a deflection. It could fall through everybody's vision. Cabral to Hernandez. It falls to no, no man's land again. It was still in no man's land. Wow, it's it's it could go any it could go anywhere right now. Norfolk could find the equalizer or Griffins could put this game to bed. Or neither. But here's Baba and he's in the box. Ah, he slices it well wide. Though I don't think he had too many options, so I think it's fair to let he had to let one let one fly like that. Really great performance from Hernandez today. He served two goals. Excellent assister.
Ayudeli. Oh, great tackle from Fetis. Mark Margarita Babatunde. Good stuff from Kazi Rex. Louis Hansel. Fetish wins it back once again. He's a great defender. Top notch. And here's Babatunde. Oh, Babatunde's poked it in. Oh, he's in. Babatunde once again. That. That is just. That is just class Babatunde, I think. Burst in. No one can stop him. It does come off of save, though, but the second chance that he gets is enough to leave Schneider frazzled a bit. And Babatunde gets his goal. I think it's the second of the season. Let me double check. Yes, it is. So, like I said, it could have been either Norfolk with the equalizer or the Griffins to put this game to bed. Now this game has surely been put to bed, but have Norfolk been silenced completely? Do they have something else to say today? We'll see. As McGee's moving in, and McGee, McGee had a good chance there. I think he did the best he could in that position. Fetish is a stalwart there. And that's all she wrote. Good performance from the Griffins. Though also a good performance from Norfolk, though the scoreline doesn't reflect it. Griffins will take the points once again to keep pressure on Dragoj to perform. Because the pressure is now on Dragoj, not on the Griffins. The Griffins are playing catch up at this moment. To try and clear Dragoj in that uh, title race at this point, really. Both teams are in 18. Next closest team is technically 8 but with a game in hand yeah that was just disaster unfortunately for the Griffins and Santos helped the ball along the way with his hand but I don't think the ref probably cares about that since it was going in anyways Baba Tunde that, he does, he's really good at that just kind of taking on everyone and then just kind of running that's how he scored actually though it did come off of a rebound he had the composure to finish it as well Seven point five. Oh my god, forty one passes, thirty five made. He's he's an architect. He really is an architect. But Hernandez had a really good game too. And he was king of the assists there. You know what? I would really love to have a stat that says chances chances created both in terms of passes that led to strikes or strikes themselves because I think that would also give us a good idea of who was involved because we have we obviously have defensive uh, qualities like interceptions we have like work rate which is like dribbling and like times the dribble was attempted and how much distance was covered we have passing obviously but I don't think there's anything that says like like chances created which would be a nice stat I think nope but yeah I think 
man, but, but Beeped was pretty good. But I also don't want to take away from my Terry now. This is Assist King day today. He really was an Assist King today. So yeah, I think I'll give it to my Terry now. This, but definitely a shout for Leo Beeped. But that's that's nothing new under the sun. He always has a good day. Though, and the defense was top notch too. Berish and Santos were really good today. Those two guys too. And for Norfolk, uh, Ortiz was good. Hawkins was good. Again, the forwards didn't really deliver, unfortunately. But yeah, Santos, Ortiz. This is, oh, excuse me, this is the strong future. Sanchez and four, Santos, well, maybe not Santos, Ortiz. That's a good team to build around, especially Ortiz in the middle, because Norfolk don't really have a, a main midfielder, so Ortiz maybe can build into that position, maybe helped along by Demarcus Jr., who's come into the roster. But yeah, we're done for the second match. Oh, I need to edit the score again. God, I keep forgetting to do that. All right. What's our next match? Royals against Eagles. In the same stadium, so we don't have to go anywhere. Oh, I missed it. Against the Eagles. So both of these teams, the Eagles are, well, I mean, yeah, both of these teams are kind of on the lower end of the table at the moment. Eagles with five, Royals with four. Royals lost their last match. Yep, there's a 2 what defeat. Excuse me, 2 Dragos. And the Eagles also lost. It was a 1 to 3 defeat. Well, 1 to 3, I say that. 3 to 1 defeat to Eshtahan. Eshtahan, of course, will face the Rovers, which is that's going to be a cracking battle, I think. Because since Norfolk have dropped points, the battle for third is wide open now. It is. Open for Eshtahan, Rovers, it is still open for Norfolk obviously, but dropping points does not help them, does not help their cause. As Royals are looking for an early chance here. You know, I have the gut feeling that the Royals might spring a surprise today. As I was looking at their midfield, Espolón. Uh, Espolón, Wonder, and who else do they have in the midfield? Espolón, Wonder, someone else is in the midfield. But they have a really solid midfield, like nothing to scoff at. They have a really, really, really good midfield. Of course, they would also have Alessio, but Alessio is working out front, up front, as the uh, rookies learn to uh, uh, look to g uh, gain experience. So having him by his side, but with teamwork would definitely help. But once the strikers uh, have like an identity for themselves and Alessio moves back into that midfield role, they really will have like a solid midfield. As for the Eagles, of course, they're in a work in progress as well with the new leadership from Nono and JJ. Which I, I think they've done a good job as Kopeski is going in here. Kopeski, Kopeski, Kopeski. It's going to be a free kick for the Royals. But yeah, and there's also some upcoming players too. Like we always have Jay Thomason, uh, Nikitovic Heiken for the Royals. Um, and then who else is that other forward? Jay Thomason, Nikitovic Heiken. Missing one. But and then you also in the defense you have Rubens Cardoso and then a few subs.
All right, that's who they have, Lucio Hernandez, who is a rookie, but he's also looking to be a really like he's got a, a solid potential for the future. Stevie Wonder coming to the rescue. Alessio now. Anthony Rochuku fighting for it. All the way back to Brathwaite. Oh, Rubens Cardoso tries to win it back, but it's with a foul. Jay Thomas and Heiken. Oh, Costas Christos. That's the other forward. So if Thomason is active, Thomason is surely active, so it'll be good to have him climb up the ranks. Which is, I think that's the nice thing about the way the league has been structured so far. Is that even though there's established players, there's still every team, every team, still has pockets of areas that they need improvements. And they, the way they can only be filled, really, apart from in the offseason with transfers, is rookies. So that means rookies play an important part still in the development of the clubs. But just because they have low stats doesn't mean that they're not valuable. They're very much valuable because they have that potentiality to them. You know, the ability to improve, improve well with their stats. Maybe mold their player into a player they'd like to see and you already have like a decent player. If I ever got the chance to participate in the VPSA, I would definitely take like a lower, lower rung team and then just make them into absolute beasts. And then once they do, when it, once I do make them into beasts, start over again, pick up another not a uh, sort of club that's not doing so well, and then just make them absolute beasts. That's what I like to do, really. Like in any of my games that I play, like I just get a poor team. Make them into legends, let them go, start all over again. That's what I really like to do. Thomason, here, this is good for the Royals. Thomason sees Stevie Wonder moving up the wing. Stevie Wonder's gonna send it in. And Alessio was going to win the header, but I don't think he had the height to win it. From the Royals. Ah, uh, the good idea was there from Rubens Cardoso, but it didn't really pan out. June Johnson. Ah, uh, poor Fizicati from there. He basically brushed off to the side. Here's Cartillo. to Andrew Wachuku was had the player in an offside position.
Mas vai -se. I haven't really seen, well, we really haven't seen any, like, really dangerous opportunities on goal as Alessio wins it back, but I thought I was going to eat my own words there, like, that's happened so, so many times. Oh, good driven from Alessio. He isn't able to find Thomason. And Rodriguez to June Johnson. He tries to find an early cross, but doesn't really work. Throw for the Eagles. Belong to Simeone. Oh, good driven from Alessio. Picked away by Kabeski, but it's with Fernando Rodriguez. Fernando Rodriguez does have two goals under his belt. Espolón wins it back. Alessio now. Oh, great German from Alessio, but he just hangs on to it. And it's going to be another foul. I swear, I think some of the fouls might be just way too soft. It feels like even if the player brushes past them, if the player so much as stumbles, the ref says it's a foul. So I have no idea how the actual referee mechanics work. Because I do know that in some games of, of Pez, they have like... They have the ranking of referees, whether he's lenient, whether he's strict, very strict, very lenient. But I don't see it in this game. I would like to, though. And also, I'd like to know just how they operate. Like how the AI works in that sense. Because it just feels kind of goofy sometimes. Like, even if the two players, like, collide, the ref calls it as a foul. Maybe it has to do with other things that I haven't checked out, but, yeah. Just a thought of mine. You know, we're constantly thinking of ways to make the league better. Also, I don't know if I told you guys, but I had my first VPSA dream. I know some of you have already hit your milestones in that sense. Is that the seriously the only highlight? Alright. Let's move on to the second half. It's still a balanced game. I, I still think it's anybody's game. We saw there the Royals didn't even have a single shot at all this half. But, just because of that, I don't think you should rule them out. I still think that they have a chance in this match. Of course, it depends on how they link up their players in the final third. But yeah, I did have my first <coughs> I had my first VPSA dream. It was a really weird dream because for some reason there was a lot of goals and it was like the camera was painting all over the place like you get close-ups. Players would like talk and like laugh at each other. You know, like typical dream stuff that just doesn't make sense and you like hop between dimensions. But the final score was 8-6. I don't remember. The teams were like an amalgamation of everyone. With like fake characters and things like that. And I remember I was... It was like half video. Like I felt like I was making a video. But I was also streaming it at the same time. And you guys were getting so upset because the score was like 8-6. And everyone was like, this is so unrealistic. We're out of here. That was a good chance there for the Royals. If they let it slip by everyone, it could have fallen to someone's feet. But yeah, I thought that was a funny dream that I had. But it's so funny that people have had VPSA dreams. That's like so strange to me. It's like having a dream about it. It's like, dang, how much did you be thinking about it? Because usually when you think about something a lot, like on your mind recently before you go to bed, you will end up dreaming about it. Like if it's a video game or like a conversation you had with someone or like a fear that you had when you're about to go to sleep. Right before you go to sleep, if it's recent, you end up dreaming about it. So that's interesting.
this Andrew Wichuku to Adam. Oh, good stuff from Cardoso. He really is starting to become like a really pretty reliable right back for the Royals. So I'm really curious about this Royals team now because they have a lot of potential players. They seem to gel together nicely. Give them like a season or two. I think they could really become a good team. Because the tactic works. Alessio finally found something that works, I think. And it does work. Of course, it's just the skill level that needs to be worked on a bit. But other than that, it's pretty. it works fine. Like the players pass the ball to each other really nicely. As Tomasin was getting a chance there. Yeah, the players do what they need to do. I see potential in this Royals team. Same with the Eagles team, though I do think they're still working out the kinks in the system. There's Espolón. Oh, brilliant pass to Thomason. Oh, it takes a deflection. That could have been a good chance for the Royals. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's a good link up play, but they just aren't able to convert them. Thomason was fighting his way through there, but he couldn't make it. Andrew Gochuku. Oh, he finds no no by himself. Oh no no. That was it. If there was a time to score, that one should have been it. But no no unfortunately hits it high. More subs. Thomas he comes off for hiking and someone else came off there, but I didn't get a chance to see who. Really good defensive work from the Royals there. The ball is going to sneak to Hyken. He's brought to the ground. The free kick is in an excellent position. Hyken and Capeski are going to shove and try and resolve it to a fist to cup action. Stevie Wonder with the free kick. It's. Oh my goodness. I thought I was going to crawl in. Fernando Rodriguez. It if, if it would have been him again. That one was close, actually. Royals are still in it. Though they have subbed out Alessio, so their midfield might suffer a bit now. But we'll see just how they do. I still think they can pack in a punch with Espolón. And the free kick from Espolón goes wide. It's okay, Espolón. We've still got plenty of time here. If we're looking for a Royals mount to a Royals victory. Pino with Hyken. Excellent link up there. Hyken gets shoved, so it's another free kick. And here's an interesting set. We have Andrew Gochuku off for Benjamin Law, who is making his first debut. Well, I mean, obviously it's his first debut. It's not You can't have a second debut. Although I guess you could if you're playing in a different competition. Like a second debut, like a debut in a League Cup, I guess. Pino. Ah, oh, he runs straight at the defense. Oh, but he wins it back. Pino to Fernando Rodriguez. Ah, oh, poor pass. I think it's make or break now before fatigue starts to break them. The ball finds Dalglish. Oh, what happened there? 
I heard the whistle go off, so I knew nothing was going to happen, but I wasn't really sure what would have happened. I guess it must have been a foul. As Vice's header after the whistle came off the post. Oh my Christ, that was a horrible strike from Pino. Let's just hope he forgets about that one. Steve Wonder to hike in. Just poke loose. Oh, they've won it back. Stevie Wonder. Ah, he's so good in this midfield. I hope he never leaves this team. Stevie Wonder sends it in. Stevie Wonder with the cross. And Pino's there. Pino's an absolute. He's an absolute beast in the air. And Pino makes up for his horrific strike from before. Hits it with his head. The assist from Stevie Wonder is putting the Royals up 1-0. And what would be an absolute massive three points for them. Also, someone fell to the ground there for the Eagles. That, wow. I guess he must have lost his balance or something. But yeah, the Eagles have some 15 minutes here to cook something up. Now, this win would be massive for the Royals. Because it would push him up to seven points. And either Rovers or Eshdon, or both, might drop points. Leaving Royals still in a very respectable position. As the ball finds Hyken, and Hyken sets it wide. See, I'm liking this Royals team. I really, really am. Hyken maybe could have done a bit better there, but I'll excuse it. Because the effort was there. And the idea was there too. As Hiking, it falls to him again. Brathwaite gets to it first. Now I'm curious to see if the Eagles can cook something up. Benjamin Law. Or I guess his French would be Benjamin Law. But I don't really know that if Law is a French uh, last name. Ooh, Anthony Silva. Oh, right into Guaico's hands. We, this is the one time we need Guaico not to be butter hands for the Royals. If you're a Royals fan. Stevie Wonder. Ah, oh, man, Stevie Wonder. Oh, he is playing against his old club, too, I guess. And he was the old head coach, too, so it was a very interesting position for him. Oh, Benjamin La takes it. I call him Benjamin because he's French. He's going to go out for a corner. No, no. Cleared away. Royals are doing well to... Go all out, all out defend. Some more pushes. Kopeski orchestrating the one again this time. That man is, has got a hot head. Free kick? No, no. Another poor Kopeski. They're going to bring out the real rage in him. Anthony Silva's header. He really didn't get that one right. Fernando Rodriguez. This could be good from him. Oh, he's going to time waste. No, Fernando Rodriguez, don't do this. Okay, so we he wants some dignity by having the opponent take it away from him. That's interesting, too, because there's no time waste 
option in tactics. It feels like it's built in. What the factors are behind it, I have no idea. It's sent in. One minute of added time. The Eagles have not much time left to say something else. <laughs> Awazani got scared of the ball there for a second. Anthony Silva. Benjamin Law with the header. He couldn't direct it towards the net. He did have some time to maybe control it too, but the heat of the moment got to him. As the Royals are very, 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 very close to notching an all-important three points. A free kick. Vice goes over. And there it is. Massive, massive points. Three points for the Royals. Eagles will be scratching their heads wondering where they went wrong. But the Royals, I think, thoroughly deserved it. They didn't attack. Well, they didn't really attack at all in the first half. But it looks like they really turned on the style in the second one. Especially through those filtered balls from Wonder to Hyken to the wing. Carried from Wonder himself. So Wonder really seems like to be the architect. And it won't surprise me if he ends up winning man of the match. According to the game. They put the little star next to his name. There it is. 74th minute. Starting to repeat. Man of the match? Steve Wonder. I mean, I called it, and it had to be him, really. Made countless incisions from the right side that caught the opposition off guard. Exactly. I called it. Who was on the right side? Thomason. Uh where is he? Hiking. I man, I should be a, I should be the analyst here, not the game. But yeah, it had to be him. Steven Wonder is just so, so good for this Royals team. He is an architect. Likewise for Bebet for the Griffins. I see the same thing here for the Royals with Wonder. And his effort has paid off once again by assisting the goal that has given the Griffins... Or not the Griffins, the Royals. Man, they're starting to seem like the Griffins to me with their skill level. Uh, they're starting to look... Very, very good, this Royals team. They still do have a lot of work to do, but the potential, the seeds of potentiality are there. I can see them. And now it's up to the team to sort of see if they can sow them and then maybe start to reap the benefits of their hard, hard work. Okay, moving on to our last match of the day, which is going to be probably the most hotly contested one. We will stay at the same stadium because the Rovers now play at Riazor as well. It does seem that everyone loves to play at this stadium. And I don't... I don't fault anyone. It's a beautiful stadium. Man, is that star chart for the Rovers real? That is ridiculous. With those stats, you'd think they'd be like unbeaten or something. That's like... Those stats are like really similar, well maybe not so similar, but a few of the stats like offense, teamwork, defense, definitely not technique or whatever the other one is. That's like akin to like a low, low, low level European club, like at least according to the game. So, huh, interesting. We'll have, we'll have Ash John play with that one, since we had Eagle play with the other one. Why the heck did it have the Griffith? 
Griffin's logo on the TV there. Man, you need to fire that, the IT guy for the stadium ASAP. Who, who hired that guy? VPSA, can you get him out, please? Thank you. But yeah, now with the with Norfolk having dropped points and the Eagles dropping points, a win for Rovers would push him straight into third with 11 points, and they would give him three points away from fourth place. A win for the Edgedown would be the exact same. So whoever wins here would be able to settle much more comfortably into a third place momentary third place of course and this match could go either way really either team could win this one it all depends on how they play on the day today and it looks like someone's offsides Chris Powell yep Here's Lund. Lund is getting his first start as well. He's always he's made uh, numerous uh, substitute appearances, but he's never had a start with Eshdon until today. He's been subbed on. He's taking which place did he take? Ooh, Rovers win it back, Ademi. Kabidi comes up, oh, Kabidi comes up big there. That was what would have been a sure goal, but he really put his body in front of the ball there, and Ademi strike hits him. As John lived for a few more minutes. Virginia Emmett sends it in. Nachi's header. He's still getting calibrated, so hopefully he does better from here on out. Man, who did Lund, who did Lund get substituted for? Who was playing on that br uh, left back? Oh, Burro. That's who's playing in his place, Burro. That man of Burro, unfortunately, has fallen by the wayside. He's failed to be pretty active. Lund has, so he's taken his place. And now I'm really curious to see how Lund adds to the defense, defensive dynamic, because I haven't seen how he plays. <gasps> Nachi! Nachi almost had it there. Nachi with the absolute bungle of a strike somehow got it, but it wasn't enough to challenge Cast that much. But as I was saying, I'm really curious to see how Lund fits into the dynamic here. Because I've seen very little of him in general. But he is a pretty good player and his updates have helped him a lot to a starting role. There he is. He's a little blonde guy off to the left side. Tell Adams finds Shaketi. Shakiri, surely, Shakiri. Oh, Malloy takes it away, and somehow it does not go out. Yeah, this is gonna be one hell of a fought match. Virginia Emmett, Virginia Emmett. What happened there? Like three Rovers players fell to the ground. Yep, this match is starting to deliver on the excitement that I was hoping it would. There he is. Lund wins the header. Virginia Emmett. Virginia Emmett. Chiquetti. Lund. Lund, what will he do? Lund finds Adams. And Adams tries to conquer the box, but the fence kept it away. Rover's looking to counter here. Novak to Novik. Oh, great tackle from Li Ryu Jong. He's also been settling very nicely into this Eshdon team. He hasn't, he didn't start much for season three. And he, I don't think he started 
the first few matches of season four, but within the last like three or four matches, he started that midfield role. So I'm li I'm liking how he's playing too. Lots of Bieber esque players, if you will. But yeah, Bieber is the cream of the crop for me. Here come the Rovers. They're in the final third. Lee Ji Hoon whips it in. No one's there to collect the clearance. Ajan looked to run it right back. Oh, Paralacha Kitty's broken through. <gasps> He's got tons of room to work with. Oh, but he really should have done better there. Maybe cut in, do something else. I think maybe should Kitty got a bit carried away. There's Lunt. Loses the fight with Garcha. Chris Powell. Oh, great jump from Chris Powell. He couldn't find someone to help him out there. Nachi pokes it away. Still with Nachi. Who has four goals to his name. This season. Powell sends it in. Oh, no one was there. Someone really should have been there. Like Tyler Adams is there right now. It's going to be a free kick. Oh, it's a good position. Jekyll Torres will take it. <gasps> that looks like a pretty good free kick, but it, ah, if it had a little bit more power and dip to it, I think that could have escaped Kask and gone in. But Kask covered it very well. Jekyll Torres wins the battle with Chess. Though not for long because it's going to be a free kick for the Rovers. Yeah, it's been very, very fought this match. No winner in sight at the moment. Nichi Hoon switches it to Garcha. The ball falls to Jojo. It's going to be a corner. Beautiful view. Novik's going to take it. And white header. Oh, great tackle from Tyler Adams there. Really shows initiative. Here's Nachi. Nachi. Ooh, he looked to be crawling into the box, but the defender did really well there to snuff it out. It's not out of danger yet, though. Tyler Adams. Tyler Adams tries to find Shakiri, but Jojo cuts it out nicely. And it's getting rough there. Free kick. Tyler Adams. I should not looking to maybe made a build. I cursed myself again. I lost the ball. Novak. Chess. What's Chess gonna do? 
He sends it in. <gasps> a demi. Ah, oh, the header. The header, the header, the header. No one can ever direct it from that angle. It always ends up going well, well over. Like a balloon. Ref tells Adams to cool it. That's fair. It's a very fraught match. <gasps> if, oh my Christ, gotcha just bicycle kicked it out of the stadium. I'd never seen anything like that in my life before. Well, actually, it didn't bicycle kick. It was like a half volley. But he got under it so... I That's pretty much left to stand. This is a new ball. There's no way they went to go retrieve that other one. That one for sure left the stadium. The ball's with Shaketi. Runs out of play. And he makes an infraction. It's going to be a yellow card for him. I think that might have been a bit too harsh. But I don't know. I'm no ref. Apparently I don't think the same way the refs do in this league. These godforsaken refs. Who knows what goes on on their minds. Ademi. <gasps> he loops it to Novak. Oh my god, that was the world's softest strike ever. We're going to go to the break to nil-nil. It's been very, very just... I honestly don't... I'd be more surprised if there's a winner in this match, if I'm honest. These two teams are just neck and neck. And if that does happen to be the case, Dragoj would be with 18, Griffin's with 18, S. John with 9, Rovers with 9, Norfolk with 8, uh, Royals with 7, Eagles with 5, they end up with 4. So the gap between Dragoj and Griffin's would be huge between the other two clubs. Which I must say is a shame. It really is a shame because it kind of takes away from the competitiveness. In terms of talent though, it's exciting. Because you see, like, the, the team is starting to become really good. But in terms of excitement for, like, league title and who's fighting for that one. A nine-point difference doesn't really, you know, it doesn't doesn't really make it exciting. Because <laughs> you have, like, three, three victories away from catching up to them. Although, instead of between eight teams, I guess it would just be between two. Griffins and Dago, which in and of itself is already exciting. Because these two, these two teams, or those two teams, need to face each other. So one of them is going to drop points. At least one of them is going to drop points. Both of them could drop points too. But then at that point, they're like, well, I mean, we don't really know what else could happen. So I don't know. I'm, I'm still looking into it too deeply, even though we're just barely getting into the second half of the season. I think more towards match day 10. Match day 10, I think so. We'll, we'll, we'll start to get an idea of how the league's going to look. So far, Lund has been doing a good job in the defense. Oh, a Demi breaks through. But Lumen is on him. A Demi forces him out for a corner. Gotcha sends it in. And Chess with the header. Could have directed towards the goal. John have it back. They find Powell. That was that was just horrifically unfortunate. The cross comes off of one of the edge down players out for a goal kick. And what looked to be a very deadly opportunity for edge down. See, how have the top three looked the last few seasons? 
Season 1, first place 22, second place 21, third place 21. Those, that, the last two being separate by goal differential. Season 2 was 26, 24, 20. Season 3 was 28, 21, 20. And right now it's 15, 15, 8. So I'm really curious to see how the top three will end up by the end of the season. Here's Powell. It finds Nachi. Torres. Nachi once again. Virginia Emmett. Ah. Oh. Demi now. He recovers it. Oh, great tackle. That was the Ryu Jong. Oh, but Ademi wins it back. And Chess meets the header. Oh, but Kabidi gets an excellent hand to it. One of the few headers that's actually directed towards the net. But Kabidi gets a hand to it. And look at that. Chris Powell will come up for Amir. Belunis, who's making his debut as well in an Esjan jersey. Oh, heavy touch. That's going to be a free kick for Esjan. It's a yellow card for Lee Ji Hoon. Virginia Emmett. Oh, Virginia Emmett has not been good today, unfortunately. Here's Chess. Could, can't get it through. Oh, Rovers are good here. Ademi! Ademi curls it in! That one was slipping under my nose. I didn't think much of it, but Ademi curled one in. Excellent passing there, Ademi with the turn. And just curls it around Kabiri. Yeah, Kabiri was getting nowhere near that one. Novik with the pass to Ademi, who has the composure, flick it past Nerino and curl it around Kabi. That one was going to be very hard to save. That's pure, pure skill from Ardit Ademi. And his club are leading 1-0 now. In an excellent, excellent fight into third place. And Novak is moving into the box. Finds Lee ji -hoon. And it comes off of Jekyll towards. It's going to be a corner for the Rovers. That was interesting. What's a goal kick? So this changes it up now. Now the Rovers would be move up to third with 11. No one to challenge them. Uh, it would be Eshdon with 8. Norfolk with 8. Royals with 7. Eagles with 5. Laying that with 4. It's still really, really tight. Here comes Chess. Uh, poor cross from Chess. Just directed it straight at Kabiri. The 
ball finds chess. Gonzalez is on it. Oh, chess is going here on the left wing. Cuts back. Sends it into Ademi. Finds Novak back on the wing. Torres gets in front of it, so it's going to be a throw for the Rovers. Novak. Someone was offside. Chess was. Kameshdahan, Rodri, Rodri's moving up the left wing, let's clear it away, Rovers doing anything they can to hang on to this lead and the three points that would come with it, free kick for Ashton, Liriu Jong's going to come off for Burro, Novik lays it out to Jojo, but a great tackle from Burro, who's trying to make himself worth once again after being put on the bench. And Burro sends it in, finds Virginia Emmett with another heavy touch. Virginia Emmett has had better days, I'm, I'm afraid. Oh, but he's moving in here. Oh, another heavy touch. This time, that's a corner. Gacha's gonna come up for Pashalic. It's interesting. Will Pashalic play in the forward role? Header from Gonzalez had no accuracy to it. I suppose not because Rodri's playing up front when he's uh, normally a midfielder. Kick for the Rovers. There's Belunis. Adams. Virginia Emmett. Gonzalez. Oh, great driven from Gonzalez to Virginia Emmett. <gasps> oh my gosh! What happened there? What in God's green earth happened there? What in... That is just ridiculous. Was that even going in? Because that might count as another own goal. Oh crap, it's going to be at the wrong angle. Wait, no it's not. Oh, I don't know about that one. Can I rewind it? Yes, I might need to. Let's see. I think... Nah. It's Virginia Emmett with the strike. It does look like Kass could have gotten a hand to it. But the idea isn't that he could have gotten a hand to it. It's because that it was directed towards the goal. And it looks like it was. And because of that... It won't count as an own goal, and it'll count as a goal for Virginia Emmett. From what I gathered, and I've had a chat with my friends too, that if you strike a ball, and what's it called, and it's going out, it's not going into the net, and then someone knocks it into the net, then it's an own goal. But if it's if it's goal bound and it comes off of someone else, then it's just a deflection into the net. And we had a heated argument about it where I thought, well, maybe doesn't couldn't it just count as a deflection or something? So, but that's what they told me, and it was pretty convincing. So that's what I'm gonna go with. 
Rover's looking to respond right away. Push out each. Push out each! Oh my god, it's gone in! This is the day of scrappy goals, I don't believe it. Maybe it is all just a fever dream. I mean, oh my gosh, that's so embarrassing. Oh, seriously? Right, you're gonna bring out the goal camera for that one? Even though you never bring it out, game? You're gonna bring it out for the one that's rolled in and it doesn't even rustle the net? You gotta be kidding me. That's embarrassing as a VPSA organizer. Do you know what the Euro European teams are gonna look at when I try and present them? When I present our numbers? I can't, I can't be showing that. I can't be the laugh me out of the room. They'll be like, yeah, right. No way we're going to allow your teams in Europe anymore if that's the kind of quality you're bringing. Next one, please. If Edge don't score here, I might just I might just throw a table. Well, it's going to go out for a corner. What a scrappy last few minutes. Regina Emmett with the corner. Burro. Burro's past everyone. All the way back to Kask. And they've done it. Rovers. Oh my god. That was one of the most chaotic endings to a match I think I've ever seen. I'm not happy with it. I'll be honest. Because it doesn't look good on the VPSA name. We can't have we can't have our highlights be showing that. Are you kidding me? The European organizers are going to be very upset with me. So I don't like it in that sense, but I'm quite happy with the goals. Oh, since everything happened in the second half, I need to write everything down. Ah, I might have to loop it around. But yep, Rovers will take the victory. It doesn't matter how you score them. The idea is that you do score them. But yeah, I would I would be embarrassed to show my face if I was on either of these teams. You can't just be scoring goals like that. Where's the quality? Oh my gosh. And then Virginia Emmett had the decency to go run to the corner flag and celebrate. And then Pushalich at least had the decency to just kind of run back. Which I guess is his style. He's not much of a celebrator. But again, again. There it is. Uh, dit. Assist from Novik. Assist? I guess so, but I don't know, man. Does it? I don't know. This game is kind of weird when it comes to counting stats. And leaving it to me is no real dream either, because I'm the one that has to make the decisions. So yeah, game, I guess I will count it as an assist. This one, there's no assist, though. You can't convince me of anything. <sighs> I already know Khabib's going to be throwing a table, which I'm also kind of upset about, but whatever. This one was really sweet though. That one definitely so so good. We might as well just leave the match as 1-0 because the other two ones I don't want to have to look again, but I guess we will. Alright game, it was a goal scored by Virginia Emmett and it was assisted by Alejandro Gonzalez, I suppose. Oh my god, the wire popped again and scared the crap out of me. In the 89th minute. Alright, 
man of the match. Who do I think was man of the match today? Alright, we can move on now. We can take a look at Demi's sweet strike once again. That really was sweet. He curled it around Kabiri. We're not going to look at those two other goals. Thank you very much. But this was a really good match. Despite the result, we, you know what? Let's just forget the two goals. Let's have the result be 1-0. I still think that that's a result to be proud of for Ejdahan. At least in performance sense. Because they played really well. They brought the match to the Rovers. They just couldn't finish the chances. Nobody was giving man that. 8.0. What? 8.0, Virginia Emmett, and he wasn't given the man of the match? Nah, this game is just, this match is bugged or something. I don't know what happened today. There's some weird energy going on in this match. I don't know what happened. Maybe someone put a spell on this match. I don't know. How is he 15 interceptions? How is he not given man of the match? That is weird to me. We hardly see 8.0s, and then somehow it wasn't enough to give him the man of the match? And, and from what I saw, Virginia Emmett had a, a kind of a stinker, not gonna lie. But maybe maybe I was blind. Maybe I'm blind too, which is totally possible. And who else would I give to besides Virginia Emmett if I don't go by the game's logic? Because Novik was pretty good. Novik was really good today. Though Stojanovic was good too, but he did commit more fouls. Same with Novak, but he did not commit any fouls. Oh wait, no, yes he did. Wait, what? No, wait, I was, yeah, I was looking at the right stats. Ademi w did play really well today as well, up front. Did well to sort of probe Kabiri. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. Who do I think was man of the match? I think I just will give it to Novik, because there's no way, because 8.0 if, I mean Virginia Emmett's stats, ah, I don't know, but I don't want to go by stats alone. Virginia Emmett, maybe he did play a big run, I just kind of overlooked him. Because you can't deny those stats, 15 interceptions, he was everywhere. Maybe and he did. I mean, scoring one goal, I guess, but it was a deflection. Had it not come of Malloy, it would have definitely been saved by Kask. Hmm. So yeah, I think I will give it to Novik. I will give it to Novik. Ilya Novik. Excellent stuff. And that does it. A hectic, hectic ending to the match day, but that's how we roll at the VPSA. And check out my awesome new wallpaper, by the way. Also, my music just ended, so just cut. Uh, I can move it to the ending song. There it is. Yeah, check out my awesome ending of the, uh, the wallpaper of the goat, my boy. But yeah, that's all. We are done with the first half of the season. We are seven matches into this season, into this beautiful season four. Which means we have seven matches left, 50% of the way there. All the matches that will come forth now in the league, we will have seen before. So we have a reference to look back on. But until then, which actually won't be for a while because I've got some busy stuff coming up this week. So I won't be able to do it at the regular schedule. So we'll have to wait until next week. A week from today, actually, to see match day eight. And then it'll be back to your regularly scheduled program with the League Cup semifinal, match day nine, and match day ten. So by the end of that match day ten, we'll have a better idea of, okay, these are the teams fighting for the league title. These are the teams fighting for a European spot. These are the teams still in it. These teams, I think, are sort of falling by the wayside. And the rest of the match days... Um, are to be determined because actually I am going back. I am going back to my old setup. I have finished my time uh, in a different country and I will be going back. Back to my home with my family. 
so I might have a return to streaming then um, I will say my living condition might be a bit up in the air because I don't really know what I what I'll do next with my life so in terms of actual streaming well, maybe I might come back but it'll depend on what I come back home to uh, but yeah I'll keep you guys in the loop and once that time approaches I'll let you know we might have like a little bit of a break while I get myself sort of set it up set up again figure out what I want to do with my life <laughs> what a great question what a what a what a easy question to answer huh but that's besides the point now I need to go get some sleep I have a huge exam tomorrow so I need to rest up so I can go ace that ace that exam which actually by the time you guys watch this video I already be midway through the exam so hey look at that I'm looking into the future all right whatever I'm just dilly dallying Thank you guys as always. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed these matches. I really did. You know, I was kind of crapping on it on the match uh, before with the ending, but honestly, that's what I love about it. Wait, you can't get that in the Premier League. That's the BPSA stuff, baby. But yeah, I'm out. I'm going to go get rest. Take it easy, guys. And I'll see you guys a week from today. So it'll be a while. So yeah, take care. Uh, yeah, you guys are loved. See you guys then. Bye.